Welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're a female professional or entrepreneur who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Hi, everyone, and a very warm welcome to episode number 23. So I feel as I want to wish you all a happy new year again, because this is the first podcast I've recorded in 2021. So happy new year to you. How are things? How has your week gone so far? How are you doing? Give yourself a moment and pause and check in with yourself. Say a kind word to yourself. Give yourself a hug if you need one. Okay, so this week, many of you have been getting on the scales. For some of you, it's the first time you've got on them in a while. Some of you like what the number says. Some of you are relieved. Others of you are maybe ashamed, frustrated, horrified, or even disgusted. Others of you are avoiding getting on the scales and telling yourself you'll get back on them next week after a few days of being good. Maybe you're thinking you don't want to see the damage you did over Christmas in black and white. But what does being good even mean? Isn't it crazy how this relatively small device has such an influence over us? I can remember all too clearly when I had days where the number would be lower than I anticipated and I would feel elated. And then those days when I didn't like what I saw. When the number didn't show a number that I thought reflected the amount of deprivation that I'd maybe felt over the previous week and I would feel mad about it. Often it felt as though the whole trajectory for the day ahead would be set by the number I had seen when I got on the scales that morning. Seeing a number I liked meant great day. I would feel vibrant and in control. I felt as though I looked better in my clothes than I had done just a few days earlier. I would have better conversations with people, get more work done, my energy, my vibe, my state for the day being a positive one because of the number on the scales. But woe betide anyone who wanted something from me on a bad scale day. I would be downhearted, frustrated, my clothes would feel frumpy, and I felt, well, just probably grumpy. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, I hope you're sort of shouting at me that it's not the scale and you would be right. You don't feel the way that you do because of the number on the scale. You feel that way because of how you're thinking about you and the scale and your weight and your preconceived ideas about what is a good and what is a bad weight, and preconceived ideas about what you make it mean to be overweight. Essentially, my feelings have nothing to do with the number on the scales and everything to do with a whole load of cultural conditioning about being fat and what I in turn make it mean about me. And my feelings are to do with my self-worth, self-confidence, self-appreciation or lack of them. And my feelings are also likely because I think losing weight should be easier than I find it, or I think it is, that the weight should come off more quickly just because I want it to. And so yes, knowing that the scales or the number you see on the scale or your actual weight isn't the cause of your elation or your misery is important for you to know. If you're in my Facebook community or one of my coaching programs, you'll know that I suggest you weigh in or at least document your weight at least twice a week. I suggest on a Friday and a Monday because sometimes we eat differently over the weekend than we do during the week. Now, many of you who are in that Facebook community or who work with me have strong feelings about that. Some of you don't want to weigh yourself at all. Some of you want to weigh yourself every day and others of you maybe want to weigh in just the once a week. Those of you who don't want to weigh yourself think that not weighing is a good solution to avoiding the negative feelings that you've associated with weighing yourself previously. Those of you who want to weigh daily maybe feel uncomfortable not knowing if what you're doing is working. You maybe want some sort of reassurance. I'm guessing you like to feel in control. By the way, I can remember periods in my life where I have both wanted to weigh myself daily, consistently, and I've also had periods where I've not wanted to weigh myself at all and haven't weighed myself at all for many months. So what's the point I want to make here? I think the point that I want to make here is that it matters less how frequently you weigh yourself than the reasons why you've adopted the pattern of weighing yourself that you have. And so I want you to ask yourself this. If you were immune to feeling any emotion when you got on the scales, how often would you weigh yourself to help you lose weight? 
So you still want to lose weight, but you're just not emotionally attached to the number that you see each time you look down at your feet. As with everything, I encourage you to figure out what works for you and to like your reasons for it. Now, I'm a bit of a scientist at heart, so I like to have the data. I like to track the numbers alongside what and how I'm eating. I know that there is a lag between what I eat and it being reflected on the scales. And I know that that lag tends to be greater when I'm losing weight than it is when I'm gaining it. My suggestion is to weigh yourself often, for me that would be daily, to have the data but not to react to that number. Use the data as a part of an informed process and make changes no more than once a fortnight. Okay, so let me elaborate a little on why I like this approach. And remember, these are my thoughts. If they work for you, great. If they don't, decide what thoughts work better for you and create an approach you like from them. So three reasons I like the idea of weighing daily. The first one is that it allows you to see how much your body weight fluctuates. Now, we all have different bodies. Some of you will have a body that retains vastly different amounts of water based on the foods you eat. Others of you will have significant fluctuations in weight based on your monthly cycle. Some of you may take medication intermittently that impacts your weight. I want you to become an expert on you. I want you to learn how eating different foods impacts the number on the scales. I want you to see and get comfortable with how your body operates, whether you experience very little change or those widely varying fluctuations. The second reason is that weighing daily allows you to manage your mind. When you decide to weigh yourself daily for the purpose of increasing your awareness of your mind, you have a unique opportunity to understand more about yourself. You get an opportunity to notice how your feelings shift when you see that number. You get an opportunity to ask yourself, what's going on for you? What are you thinking that creates that feeling? For example, you may think you're feeling frustrated because the number on the scale hasn't changed, but you're not. In between that number not changing and you feeling frustrated, there's a thought, something that you're thinking that is causing the frustration. You want to find that thought. You want to understand what you're making the number not changing and remaining the same mean. If you're feeling frustrated, it's likely to be because you're thinking it's not working. It being whatever it is you're doing that you expected to result in the number being lower than it is. It could be the diet you're following. It could be you deciding to stop snacking. It could be you exercising or moving more. And so feeling that frustration, questioning why you're feeling it, and I mean finding the underlying thoughts, is an opportunity for you to explore your thinking and then dig into that. Because it won't just be distracting you from using scale data to help your weight loss efforts. The thoughts that come up for you when you get on the scales will be hindering your weight loss in other areas too. If you think your weight loss efforts are not working because the number on the scales has stayed the same, it could be an opportunity for you to explore why you think that. Maybe you are in perimenopause or menopause and don't believe you will be able to lose weight because that's just the way things are when you're that age. Is it possible your body is adjusting to the changes you've made? Is it possible it may take longer than you expected it or think that it should? These are the questions I encourage you to be asking yourself when you think it's not working. Uncover those thoughts that come up for you when you get on the scales and then explore how else they might be making things more difficult for you as you go about your weight loss journey. And then the third one is that weighing daily allows you to become an expert on how your body responds to the food that you eat. You get to know whether eating one large pasta meal results in a two pound weight gain, but will maybe resolve itself within three days if you immediately go back to eating how you were before. You get to learn that skipping dinner may mean you're a pound lighter on the scales the next day, but doesn't result in any long-term reduction. You get to see how you lose one and a half pounds when you drink two litres of water each day, only half a pound if you don't, even when you eat the same meals. So to recap, the three reasons I like the idea of weighing daily are number one, to help you understand how your weight naturally fluctuates for non-food reasons. Number two, to give you an opportunity to really increase your awareness of how you're thinking and feeling about the number on the scales so that you can uncover some of your intrinsic belief system about you and your weight and losing it and gaining it. And number three is to help you become an expert on how your body responds to different foods and ways of eating so that you know it takes five, not three good days of healthy eating to see the number on the scales move. 
So the next main takeaway I want to leave you with today is that whilst you may be weighing daily, you don't want to be continually responding to the number you see by changing how you're eating. Now, sometimes we do this with good intention. We maybe have been eating healthily in such a way that we think will help us lose weight. And maybe after a week, the scales haven't changed. And so we think we should do something different. Other times, it may look more like frustration that this isn't working. Not eating cake is not resulting in me losing weight. So I may as well go back to eating cake. When I'm working with someone, we only look to change how they are eating once a fortnight, often less than that if the number on the scale isn't budging. You will lose weight more easily if you are patient. If you allow yourself to eat how you've planned for a fortnight before making changes, you're going to give yourself far greater insight into what's going on for you. If you make a change every few days, it's going to be difficult to see what's working and what's not. Before I go, I just wanted to say a couple of things about what it's like to experience shame when you see the number on the scale or at the thought of sharing that number with others. Shame is a feeling, an emotion, a one-word description of a vibration in your body. And you don't feel the shame because of who you are or what you have or have not done, how well you have or haven't taken care of yourself. You don't feel it because of the foods you like and eat, how you use food as a coping mechanism for life. There are many reasons we will feel shame, but ultimately we feel it when we think we should be different to how we are, or have done things differently to how we've done them. We feel shame when we judge ourselves. And I want to offer to you that you're human. You are a perfect human. Humans are designed to be imperfect. And you, with all your imperfections, are therefore a perfect human. So your thoughts about how you should be better or different are untrue. There is no right or better way for you to be. You just are. So whether you feel shame when you stand on the scale, wake up after a few too many drinks, or notice that you ate the whole packet of biscuits again. Just remember that you're feeling that shame because of thoughts, those sentences running through your mind, not because of what you weigh or what you ate or what you did. And you get to decide what you think. So be aware of those thoughts. Decide whether you want to think them. And if you don't, decide what you want to think instead. And then practice thinking that new thought until it shifts how you're feeling and you can release the shame. And if you want help with any of this, come join us in my One Life Academy or the next Lose Weight, Live Life Mastermind. When I'm recording this podcast, there's still a space left on the January 2021 class. So reach out if that's something you're interested in. Thanks, everybody. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to be your coach. There are two ways that you can work with me. You can join my monthly membership program, My One Life Academy, that gives you self-paced learning, supported by twice weekly live calls and a whole lot more. Or you can join the waiting list for my next six month, lose weight, live life, group coaching, mastermind intensive. Go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching to find out all the details.